Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is January 2nd, 2026. Taking a look at the infrared satellite imagery, Pacific Northwest to the upper right. Check out our low pressure system under development. This is a part of our trough here off the West Coast of North America, and this is going to ride up the coastline and kind of switch things up, bring some southerly winds, some gusty winds for some locations, and some big waves, some coastal flooding issues potentially. And then as we go through this weekend and towards next week, we start to bring some cooler air masses in here for some mountain snow building and some interesting weather associated with those frontal systems. Also, we'll dive into all those details as we go through the video this morning. Tempest Weather Station, this one is really fun, and it's much more fun to watch the weather when you have one of these attached to your place of residence. Click on the link down below to save 10% off. I highly recommend that station. And if you are on Facebook, check me out there, uh, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. I'll leave the link in the comments down below, but it makes it easier for some people to kind of share what information I'm putting out with friends and family. I still have a lot of people that, you know, friends and family that are on Facebook myself. So we do have some light precipitation across the region. And the reason why I'm showing this is because some of the cascades, it could be still trapped some colder air into the past areas, and you could get a glaze of some freezing rain, including some portions of Oregon, the Columbia River Gorge as well. Some of this precipitation just now coming to an end for places like Spokane, moving across the Idaho Panhandle, also some freezing rain associated with that. And you can see these winter weather advisories that are out there in cascades as well. So you see for the coastal areas, you got coastal flood advisory, warning, and you got a coastal flood watch. So it's kind of confusing seeing all that, but the takeaway is that we're dealing with the king tides, lower pressure than normal, bigger waves than normal, and stronger winds than normal. So that's what's contributing to this coastal flood warning that is out there. So some a pretty strong warning here, some uh, potentially three foot above ground level inundation. So that could be problematic for some businesses and roadways along the coastline out there. And this is going to get extended all the way on in through Sunday afternoon, no doubt. So uh, there's the last wrap up there, winter weather advisories. Now let's take a look at how this is going to unfold, or at least what the latest European model. This is hot off the presses, 12Z data. If we scroll on through the day today, you can still see some of this freezing rain and snow kind of trapped there in some of the lower elevations. That's because we got the offshore winds keeping that cold air trap. But as we go through Saturday night, tomorrow night, we're going to start to bring the southerlies across the region, scour out some of these inversions, and you bring that, that deeper low pressure center up towards Vancouver Island as as we go on in through the day on Sunday. Again, not a major windstorm, just kind of a garden variety thing. And I'll show you some of the wind speed to be expected with that here is over the next few slides. But as we go through Sunday night, you see the snow level start to drop a bit here as we get some cooler air moving in. And then we get even colder systems as we go through Tuesday into Wednesday, maybe some lower elevation convergence zone snowfall, mainly north of Seattle, across western Washington, and then another chilly system as we go through Wednesday night on into Thursday with some of the lower snow levels also showing up. Up there maybe something similar to what we got last week where some select locations got some lower snowfall when the convergence zones moved across those regions now this is the 12z data you can see individual ensemble members if you want to know what these two digits are, you just add a nine to that. So it's a 987 millibar low. And there's a 987 millibar low as the ensemble mean situated right there. So again, kind of a garden variety wind event here coming up across the region. I'll show you the speed starting now. I see Seattle, the 10th and the 90th percentile between 24 and 44. So not really that big of a deal. It still can cause some damage and some power outages. Again, depending on the exact track of that low, which we still don't quite know. Could be a bit gustier across the Northwest interior for some of the coastal areas also. And if I drop down towards Portland, toggling back and forth, you can kind of see 27 to 49. Maybe a, a good shot of wind through the, the Willamette Valley on the high end of things. Again, that's no guarantee of any kind of a windstorm or anything, but some of the models are showing a, a little bit of a nice southerly surge here as we go on through Saturday night into Sunday morning. And again, maybe windy for the windier for the coastal areas. You see Ben between 32 and 55 also. Now, if we look at Des Moines, Washington, there's probably going to be some coastal flood advisories out for the Puget Sound because look at some of these tides are very high, especially Saturday and Sunday. And that uh, that's going to be occurring at the same time as the stronger winds on Sunday morning. Places like Three Tree Point or any south facing beaches, you could really get hammered with these high tides and the strong winds rolling in here, especially the low pressure moving across the area. So heads up for that. Now, looking at Cape Disappointment, you see we've got these king tides going on, and then we drop the tides back down as we go through the mid portion of the months. And the problem is, is that we're bringing that low pressure, the big winds and the big waves when we have the king tides out there. So that's why the coastal flood warnings are in effect. So do be prepared over this upcoming weekend. 
And you can even add a foot to the sea level because of the lower pressure already on top of the king tides. And then the wind and the wave just contribute to the potential impacts. So if we look at 100 meter wind speed, we'll scroll through this and you see some of the easterly component as we go through the day today on through tonight and just briefly into the day tomorrow. But then the southerly start to return and you can see some of those winds moving up the Willamette Valley, clearing out the inversions, coming across some of the Puget Sound as we go through Sunday morning. Again, coinciding with the king tide activity. See these stronger winds coming in there? Again, that means big waves also, and the low pressure is rising the sea level as well. And then we continue to be a bit breezy here as we go through Sunday night, but we switch things up and we start to bring that wind out of the north and west, and the much colder air aloft starts to arrive into the Pacific Northwest, maybe some windy conditions at times with the arrival of those systems also. Accumulated 10 meter max wind gusts. It's really not showing too much on this morning's European models. We go through the day on Sunday. See, maybe some gusts towards 50 across the northwest interior. The coastal area is a little bit windier. And you know, the Willamette Valley just gusts into the 30s. So nothing special. Just kind of a blustery day showing up on this morning's European model run. Now, if we take a look at the wave action, you'll see as we continue on in through the day today and through Saturday, look at that, the wave increasing, wave action increasing. And on the day Sunday, probably the worst because the winds are going to be strongest on Sunday as well. Biggest waves and king tides are going to be nasty for the coastal areas. Now, looking at 700 millibar temperatures, you see this is at 10,000 feet. And this system right now is not great for upper elevation snowfall. It's just not that cold at 10,000 feet. But as we go through Sunday night, you see the colder air start to actually on the day Sunday. And then on through Sunday night, that colder air really gets across the region there. So we're building a bit of the snowpack back. And then as we go through Tuesday and into Wednesday, look at this cold air arriving with this next system out of the Northwest. And then maybe a one, two punch as we go through Wednesday night on into Thursday, hopefully building up some that snowpack then watch what happens at the 12z data hot off the presses shows as we scroll off into the mid portion of january not a good look for the snowpack that's some major ridging setting itself up here across pacific northwest the hope is this ridge sets up a little bit further west and maybe allows for some arctic air to get back down into the area but again continues to show some ridging and it's pretty strong in a lot of these model runs now, taking a look at the snow depth. So we build it up fairly well here as we go through the end of the weekend and on into early next week. And you see the snowpack build up, you know, as we go through the morning Thursday, it's probably the best it's going to be. And then as we start to deal with that ridging, the warmer temperatures a lot, you can see the snowpack actually decrease as we go through the mid portion of January. Hope that doesn't happen. We'll see. There's still plenty of time to switch up that pattern. But man, that ridging has been very persistent in the model runs. And I'll show you on the European artificial intelligence. There goes our current system we're dealing with now. Then we get this cooler northwest flow here, bringing in a couple frontal systems with it. And then the ridging really starts to get established as we go through the 12th, the 13th, the 14th, man, all the way up into Alaska. And again, kind of hoping this retrogates back to the west, gets over the Bering Sea and the Aleutian Islands, maybe it brings a, a colder pattern here back into the Pacific Northwest. If nothing else, I don't want to be caught underneath a ridge for you know a week or two at a time. Now, looking at for the drought monitor was updated on Thursday. And yeah, we are drought free across Western Washington. Check it out. Just some abnormally dry conditions. And that's just because the long range for the long range of precipitation, uh, you know, we didn't have that much last year. We were below normal, but yeah, this is not a big deal for, uh, you know, is what I'm the gist of what I'm saying. You can see there's still some moderate and severe drought out there for some places, the Eastern Washington, Eastern Oregon, a little bit more serious there across portions of Western Montana. So if we look back over the last 365 days, you can see we've been pretty substantially below normal for a lot of the Pacific Northwest. However, since the water year, Washington State has been doing much better October 1st. This no doubt because of the last round of systems that we got that caused the flooding. Still Western Oregon below normal since October 1st though. And there's the 8th to 14 day, kind of a mixed bag here across Pacific Northwest, below normal signal there for the West Coast. The CPC, the Climate Prediction Center, is paying attention to our potential ridging as we go towards the mid portion of January. Cross your fingers that that switches up. But otherwise, yeah, check me out on Facebook. Patreon page link should be down below as well. Hopefully you guys are having a good day and I will catch you guys in the next forecast.